Recently, I picked up the rest of the figures I needed to make a complete cantina band. I thought it might be cool to make them some sort of a special display, which is when I came across this awesome bandstand by one of my favorite custom Black Series creators, and I knew I just had to make it. The main display is in these four pieces, two halves for the base and two halves for the arch. I did absolutely no post-processing on these pieces other than roughly sanding the sides that needed to be glued together to give them a bit of grip for the adhesive. I used my usual E6000 on the inside and super glue around the edges to attach the halves together. I let those sit to dry for a bit before moving on to the next step, which was giving these pieces some nice texture. For that, I decided to use this very specific wood filler that if you've watched any of my other videos are well aware by now that I'm obsessed with this stuff. It's very plasticky and honestly hardly seems like wood filler at all. But anyway, I really just slather this on with my fingers. In this instance, I was not being picky about smoothing it out or anything as it was being used to create a texture, sort of like a stone or plaster layer. Like texture. I even went over where it had started to dry a little with my gloved finger and sort of blotted it to make it more of a speckled texture. This ended up working out really, really well, and it was such an easy step to do, so if you're needing to quickly texturize something, then I highly recommend this method. It also completely hid the center seam lines on the pieces. Unfortunately, because it dries white, it's really hard to see the texture of it on camera, even in real life, honestly, but here's what it looked like. I only did the single coat of the wood filler on the pieces. The arch I did in steps just so that I had a dry spot to grab. I then took a piece of 400 grit sandpaper and ran that over the surface to knock off any of the bits that really weren't stuck onto the main pieces. I also used it to smooth out a few areas a little more just so that there was some variance in texture. Now it's time for paint. I didn't even bother to prime the pieces first and went straight in with a darker taupe color. I wanted to start off dark and gradually build it up to the sandy cream color that I wanted. That way there would hopefully be a nice, variance in tone and it would look really natural. I did decide to use my airbrush for this, although this is a paint job that could have been done very easily by hand with a paintbrush. In fact, I do eventually switch to using a paintbrush for more of the dry brushing work, but I just really like using my airbrush and I always feel like I never get as good of an opportunity to use it. So any chance that I have an excuse, I like pulling it out. And it also really helped because the paint that you use with an airbrush is so thin and translucent. It really gave a nice natural modeled look that you can see on the base portion already. In this case, I was definitely not worried about getting an even coat of color. For the second sort of base coat, I decided to add in some tonal variation with this burnt sienna and yellow ochre colors. I really watered them down so they were really translucent going on and just gave a subtle hint of color on top of the taupe. And this I applied at random across the surface of the arch and the base. So not worried about any sort of even coverage, just really splotchy all over the place. I then added a very translucent coat of a lighter creamy beige color to pull up the entire tonal value of both the arch and the base. I felt it was a little dark and I didn't want to start with that base and then try and dry brush it because I figured it would just look like too much of a stark difference. So once that coat had dried, it was time to go in with the first round of dry brushing, which really for this entire paint job, I was just kind of winging it and having fun doing something different for a change. So I did go back and forth, which you will see in a bit, just because I felt that this initial coat, which you can see the colors that I was using on the side, it was still too much of a contrast between the like recessed rocky areas and then what I was dry brushing. So I did eventually decide to, on both the arch and the base, go back in with another layer of air brushing to more evenly balance the color. Again, everything is such a translucent coat of paint that I really wasn't losing any definition. It was just closing the value gap between the highlights and shadows so that there wasn't such a stark contrast. Once I was happy with the overall color of the pieces, I went in and just did some final touch-ups with a lighter cream shade to bring out some more highlights, as well as a wash into more of the recessed areas, especially in the arch, you could really see in the reference photos that the like plaster on the cantina walls had like a nice 
terracotta color in some of the more chipped off areas and so I used a wash to bring that out more. I tried to do the same thing for the base but using a darker wash because I knew that I wanted the base to be darker than the archway which sort of represented the walls of the cantina. It's kind of hard to see what's happening with the floor. In fact, most of it looks like it's like a polished gray floor which seems a bit weird like it just sort of seems like it should be more of like a texturized natural sort of stone on the floor and so I knew I wanted it to be a darker color so that it didn't just look like a uniform piece and so I eventually decided to go in and just wash the entire base with a custom black wash. I did water it down so it wasn't so strong because I did still want it to be like a mid-tone gray and not like super super dark like this wash could have gotten it to and then I went and blotted off some of the excess with some paper towel just so that there were some lighter areas showing through. The final painting step for these pieces was to paint on the red and blue stripes onto the arch. Now there is actually a template that you can print which would be super helpful to get these stripes on nice and evenly onto this piece but I just decided to freehand it. I'm a very comfortable painter so this I was fine with. I will say though the paint that I was using was very sheer and honestly I didn't really mind that because the skipping that naturally happened because of the texture that I added onto the piece. It looked really natural, although apparently this blue was like the most translucent blue paint that I own. For both stripes, I did go back in with a bit more paint just to even out the color, make it look more uniform, even though both of these stripes get weathered a lot. Also, these stripes come from the archways that are painted like above the booth areas in the cantina. To weather the stripes further, I actually ended up using these fine point Q-tips or cotton swabs. This was kind of an accidental discovery. I think I went to like clean up some rough areas on the stripes that I painted and I realized it completely would take off the paint and I thought that worked well enough. So I literally just scrubbed off the paint stripes and it worked so well and gave it such a perfect and natural look. Now those were just the main base pieces but we have all of these really cool accessories including these speakers, the these cups, a little table, a music stand, this twin sun sign, and a credit donation box. And I resin printed these so that they could have all of that nice, fine, crisp detail and so that I also didn't have to worry about sanding anything. After the usual resin print cure and cleanup routine, I primed all of the pieces with this black airbrush primer. These are more original accessories and so they didn't really have a specific color that I knew they had to be painted and I also wasn't entirely sure what color I would want to be painting them. So I figured a black base would would be perfectly fine for all of them to start off with. The speakers honestly could have just stayed black, but I wanted to give them a bit more dimension, so I decided to paint the grill of the speaker in a metallic silver color and then also add different elements of gloss. So the actual like speaker front parts I glossed up as well as the main outer casing of the speaker. I left the base, the matte black, and just added a bit of weathering. For the twin sun sign, I went with a brushed bronze look, so I really just roughly dry brushed the entire thing and gradually built up the bronze color. I did eventually decide to paint the two suns silver and gold, although for some reason I apparently didn't film that. It was sort of like a last minute change, but that is something that I did to this as well, even though the straight bronze looked pretty nice on its own. As for the other larger accessories, I did a metallic black for the music stand with a bit of weathering just to give it a bit more of an interesting texture other than the matte black. For the table, I decided on silver, again, with some weathering. I feel like the cantina is not a very, you know, pristinely kept place. And so having like a perfectly metallic silver table would seem a little out of place. I painted the cups in a variety of metallic shades. And the final accessory to paint was the tip box. This I wanted to try and get like a faux wood texture. It just seems like it would be made out of wood. So I used a really streaky painting method to try and give it a bit of a wood grain. So in layers, use the same brown paint and it actually turned out really well. 
and I repeated that same method on the lid. Now that all of the pieces are painted, it was time to start the minimal assembly to this diorama. So gluing the speakers on either side of the main base and then the twin sun sign onto the center of the archway. And then finally the arch onto the base. The last thing we need is of course the actual band members. So I got all of them out of their packaging, which is always interesting. I like to pose and then place my figures, so I got all of the guys set up with their instruments, swapped out some hands in a few cases. After getting everyone situated and looking like they're ready to make some music, the final step was to set them up on the bandstand. Mm -hmm. 